Hi. Welcome to Intro to Ethics um, of Phil uh, 1300, Section 70 and 80. Uh, I've got CRNs up there too if you're curious about those. Um, uh, my name is Grant Yocum. I'm going to be your instructor for the course. Um, uh, my name is proper spelling and my email address are right on the top of your syllabus, which is posted to Moodle and attached to this email. Um, so. Uh, you've got those. Um, I have office hours if you're looking for me in NSC 642, sort of all the way up and to the back of one of the towers there, um, in the Math and Science Center. Um, and they are Thursdays from 4.30 to 5.30 and I'm uh, happy to meet you by appointment as well. Uh, these sections will be online. So, um, it, my apologies, I'm batching two videos in one. Um, it's, I like to say it once and say it well the first time um, rather than repeat myself, which is one of the virtues of these online courses using the video format. So, um, anyhow, this course is ethics. Uh, I'm going to start off by telling you a few things about myself. Um, uh, first off, I'm in Canada right now. And so I'm sort of telecommuting this. Um, I've been at Oakland University since uh, January 2005, so sort of a long time. Um, I've had a longer teaching career than that too, um, including teaching support and whatnot. Um, so it's not like I just fell off the turnip truck. Um, I hold a master's in philosophy and a PhD in philosophy and interdisciplinary humanities. Um, and both from Brock University. It's about 20 minutes out of Niagara Falls on the Canadian side if you're looking for it. Um, and uh, I've been teaching ethics right from the beginning. Actually, my first courses um, were ethics courses. So, um, it, what we're going to do this semester is um, put together a course that fits into a general box, which is right on the first page of your syllabus. This video is um, basically designed to go over your course syllabus and um, course policies and what's expected of you and just generally introduce you to the course and what we're going to be talking about throughout the semester. It'll be followed up by um, sort of a general introduction and um, sort of preamble video to um, give you uh, some context for the texts that we are reading. Um, so so that, that will be um, what we will do. Um, largely the method of instruction for this course is going to consist of the, these YouTube videos supplemented by other theorists, um, also doing sort of video presentations on this material, often with higher production values than mine, but uh, it, so it is kind of thing until I get like a major Fulbright or something along those lines. This has got to be the way it's going to be. Um, so, um, the course catalog description. The reason it's there is this is, like I say, the box that um, the course has to um, fit into. So, the course catalog lists this course as uh, major ethical analysis of right and wrong, good and evil from the ancient Greeks to the present, appeals to custom, theology, happiness, reason, human nature, will be examined offering, uh, as offering viable criteria for judgments on contemporary issues of moral concern, offered every semester. Satisfies the university uh, genetic requirement, the Western civilization, knowledge exploration area. So um, that's uh, basically what the course has to be, and we will be, um, you, you see what it did is, um, it, well, put the focus rate on ethics, uh, how do we draw, draw um, a judgment on the basis of what criteria, um, uh, distinctions between right and wrong, good and evil, yet it, at the same time required this to be a historical introduction, starting from the ancient Greeks, and we've got two of them that we'll be reading. Um, this guy I call Socrates, even though the name Plato is on the cover. I'll say more about that. And then Aristotle and the word ethics is right in the title of the book, so that's good. Um, after that, we move to um, three books, two from John Stuart Mill and one by Immanuel Kant. Um, uh, with regard to, um, to, to to modern uh, systemized ethical theory kind of thing, 
And then following that, we will move on to Nietzsche and Jean-Paul Sartre um, for uh, sort of a postmodern ethical analysis. So um, that will be uh, what we do in the course. There are a couple of other things in here um, towards the course objectives for Gen Ed. Um, towards the bottom, um, and, and basically the course has to do these things, to show students how theories about ethics have developed over time. And again, hitting home the historical introduction to ethical theory and point, so that's what the course has to be. In addition to the Western civilization knowledge area, this uh, course also includes cross-cutting capacities of effective communication and critical thinking. As such, it accomplishes the following further objectives. To develop students' facility in reading and analyzing theories learned in class. So basically, um, we've got to develop your facility using reasoning and some reasoning skills to analyze theoretical positions. So these theories that we'll be uh, talking about, these aren't doctrines that I'm asking you to adopt. These are theories that I'm asking you to critically evaluate. So that's what we're doing. Um, the, secondly, um, to develop students' facility in writing uh, creatively and clearly about ethical questions. So you're going to have to write. Right? That's going to be built into the course. And finally, to help students learn how to apply ethical theory to concrete situations. So I'll try to use contemporary examples to help illustrate um, this kind of theory. Um, I'll also be using a lot of plain language rather than the high philosophical language that some of this stuff is written in to illustrate and make it hopefully live for you. Because if this stuff doesn't help you, it belongs over in the waste bin. Right? So uh, that's why we study philosophy. These theories are instrumentally valuable, right? So especially in ethics, because ethics is supposed to be a theoretical approach to how to live your life, how to make choices, how to, in really general terms, manage your freedom, right? So this is a course about freedom, right? Because if you were not free, to choose between this and that, what sense does it make to say you should choose this rather than that? Make sense? Hopefully. Well, it, we've got an entire course to get through um, these sorts of ideas. So um, you're probably thinking I'm a jerk because boy, oh boy, look at this pile of books. Oh my gosh, do we have to read all of all of these books? No, Plato's Five Dialogues, we're looking at two um, that pertain to questions about ju justice. Um, in, in general, I, uh, I tend to think the Apology is about rights, whereas the Crito is about duties. Right? So um, I, I just recently re-recorded and uh, updated my content for the, um, the Socrates portion of this class. So um, that's where we are starting. Um, by the way, um, almost all your books, all of these books here are Hackett. And Hackett is designed to be as cheap as possible. Right? So these are good translations cheaply. That's why I've chosen them. I don't want you to break the bank for your books for this course. So we'll be starting with Plato's Five Dialogues and reading two of those. Right? Um, then we will be moving on to Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, which you're probably freaking out because it is a huge book um, with uh, 10 chapters, which are called books in it. Um, and we're just reading books one and two and section one of book three. Right? It's 32, 33 pages or something like that. So it, it will not, it will not be too much reading. Right? It, you see, what we're trying to do with the readings for this course is get you reading closely and deeply. Right? So unlike an English course where you're just reading, 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 how am I going to keep up with all of this reading? The, the reading assignments for this course are short, but you're expected to read them very, very closely. Right? Um, so effectively, those are your first two books. Um, your next three, I know it's annoying, Right, but it, we reach a situation with Mill where one book won't do. Right, um, 
It, we're looking at the little pamphlet book, uh, Kant's Grounding to the Metaphysical Morals, and we're not even going all the way through. We're just going through the first and second section here, so it's not even a ton. Um, this will likely be the most difficult philosopher we'll engage with all semester, um, but nonetheless, I've been doing this a long time, so I should be able to lead you through um, the, the maze uh, with regard to Kant. It's actually quite intuitive once you get a knack for it. Right? Um, then we will move on to John Stuart Mill, where I had you buy two books on liberty and utilitarianism. Uh, utilitarianism is the one that was written second, but we're starting with it, which is kind of annoying, I know. But nonetheless, um, it, this is where um, he's introducing um, a very intuitive kind of moral system that aims to produce what he says is the greatest good for the greatest number. And what should I do in any given situation? It comes down to almost a calculus, right? You calculate which outcomes are going to produce the greatest good for the greatest number. Uh, just about just sort of introduced the whole of utilitarianism to you there, but there are problems and little things that we've got to work out. But nonetheless, this is his defense of uh, the principle of utility here. Um, we're reading part of the way through there, I think three sections of it. And um, unfortunately, uh, well, it's, we would have to read five sections of this in order to get not as good an explanation of what happens in the first section of On Liberty. So um, I had you also buy On Liberty, um, which I don't feel bad about because these books are dirt cheap. Right? Um, so we'll be reading On Liberty, uh, which is um, utilitarianism taken and applied to political theory. Right? Um, it we'll talk about specific liberties, which are politically defended rights, yet interesting, instrumentally valuable. And so hopefully that'll be an interesting discussion um, there. And that'll be the modernist section of the course. And then we will move into um, the postmodern section of the course. Let me see, how far did I have you read? Um, and, and three sections of Nietzsche's Beyond Good and Evil, the preface in sections one and two, uh, where Nietzsche introduces a very, very potent criticism of ethical theory. I also, I like Nietzsche especially these days because Nietzsche, more than a hundred years ago, created a method of moral critique that will still let you be critical of a position and have that criticism be substantive post-truth. Right? Um, my, my own research focuses on a bit of Nietzsche and I, I, I use it in terms of activist theory myself, but um, nonetheless this should be a very interesting discussion um, and, that I'm looking forward to having with you. So Nietzsche is beyond good and evil. Big crazy guy calling into the, 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 the night on the cover. I don't, I don't really understand these covers half the time, but nonetheless, right? beyond good and evil. Right? Because he tends to think that I ought oppositions between good and evil are problematic, and we'll get into that critique. And right? his critique goes much deeper than that as well, as we'll see. Right? And um, following Nietzsche, Given the issues that Nietzsche has raised with how we approach ethical theory, um, what we are going to do is um, uh, existentialism and human emotions, which is a good sort of pamphlet introduction and selections from a number of different publications from uh, Jean-Paul Sartre. Um, who, if you've heard of him, um, won and then turned down the Nobel Prize in Literature uh, for his book Nausea. He was, he was as popular as a philosopher gets, really. Right? But um, largely, uh, Sartre has taken Nietzsche seriously, and he is trying to um, ground in ethics, not in a deity, not in a metaphysics, not in um, anything along those lines, but rather right, ground it squarely in our freedom and our ability to make choices. Right? So as 
clear as can be um, that claim that I made about this being um, a course about how to manage your freedom, I conclude by hitting the topic of freedom very, very hard. Right. So those are going to be your texts for the course. Um, I do text for the course that way because um, there are other options. There are course books like Doing Ethics Here, Moral Reasoning and Contemporary Issues. Well, one, this isn't a historical introduction. Right. I have to have a historical introduction. Uh, the other thing is that um, effectively uh, Louis Vaughan offers an interpretation of ethical theory. Right? So effectively what you get when you get a book like this is an interpretation of these other theorists over here. So what we're doing is interpreting the interpretation right? with uh, assignments and bullet forms and summaries and quick reviews and uh, thought experiments and model exam questions and things like that. Right? It's effectively turned something that is supposed to be meta-theoretical, right? Something that is supposed to supersede systemization, right? Into a system. So I don't like... Plus, you can get all of the books I ordered for this course for less than the cost of one of these books that's on... Um, it's a fourth edition right now, and this one's probably old. They're probably on the sixth, so my copy's not even valid anymore. So, um, I do it that way also because if we're going to read Kant and interpret Kant, I'd like to have Kant in front of me in order to do that, not Vaughn on Kant. Uh, so, um, that's, that's why um, I've had you buy so many books. And like I say, we're not going all the way through any of them. I strive to make the readings uh, doable for you. Uh, so, um, those are books, they're at the OU Bookstore, um, all are required, uh, so get them. Um, there are other versions of a lot of these, like for example, the, the Five Dialogues one, there's the Trial and Death of Socrates. I prefer you to get the actual books that I've ordered for the course because I throw up page numbers sometimes, and if you don't have the same book, you don't have the page number, and you're lost. I don't want you to be lost, I want you to be found. So. Anyhow, um, so generally it's a course about how to be better people, right, um, at the same time as grounding our knowledge of how our moral beliefs have evolved the way that they have, and enabling us to become critical of those moral beliefs as well, because if we're uncritical of moral beliefs, then they hold the status of dogma. We don't want that. Uh, we want to be able to think for ourselves and it, if we value freedom at all. And so um, that's, 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 and you should be critical of each and every one of these guys because they're trying to tell you what to do. Right? Each and every one of these classes is saying, choose this, don't choose that, choose this way, not that way. Right? And when somebody tells you what to do, you should say, well, why? Why should I do it your way and not the way I want to do it? If they've got a good argument, uh, maybe do it their way. But um, if not, uh, then it's a bad argument. It should be pointed out. And that's where we're going to start in this course. So, um, like I say, I've had office hours. MSC uh, 642, is that correct? 42, yes. Thursdays, 4.30 to 5.30, um, come by and see me, they're drop-in, so you don't need an appointment or anything along those lines. If you get lost in the course, or uh, lost in your readings, or with just like a pep talk or something along those lines, then you want some help uh, prepping for an assignment or something like that, um, it, please come talk to me, I've been doing this a while, I can help. Um, if you can't make those office hours and still would like to meet or virtually meet, um, either with a bit of notice and some negotiation and I can come into um, the university. Uh, the issue is I've got twin two-year-old girls that are in daycare, um, so childcare is a little bit buggy. It's one of the reasons I'm teaching online. The other one is that I, I'm telecommuting rather than coming from Canada to teach these courses, right, which I've been doing a long time. So. Um, it, 
nonetheless, if you absolutely need a meeting, I'll try and make that happen. If I absolutely cannot be there, I'm going to offer to meet you via Skype. We can Skype. Right? And then we can virtually meet. Right? And I'll likely be in this, my new rented office, right? um, with a chalkboard behind me. So I'll be able to chalkboard help you through. And right? hopefully it'll be almost just as good. Right? So, um, that's almost all of page one of the syllabus. The final thing is um, uh, your grade breakdown. These are where your grades come from for the course. There are going to be three tests for 30% each for a total of 90%. That's the lion's share of your grade. Um, these are going to be writing intensive tests and how they are left laid out is we will study two tests. In your case, um, the five dialogues, the Socratic argument, and then Aristotle, that's ancient philosophy, we'll have a test, then we're done with ancient philosophy. Pretty good. Then we will move on to Immanuel Kant and the two books by John Stuart Mill. And then we'll have a test, and then we're done. And then we will move on to the postmodern section, Nietzsche, Sartre, and then the course is over. All right, so um, those, those are your tests. Um, they will consist of uh, fairly involved um, uh, questions where you are going to be writing sort of mini essays, um, a paragraph or two in response to six questions. So that's a paragraph or two each kind of thing. Um, the questions will likely uh, isolate an idea and ask you to explain that idea and then make a distinction or something along those lines. Generally, the questions ask you to do a couple of things, and that's why I suggest two paragraphs. Right? Um, you'll see I suggest on the, uh, the tests themselves that a bare minimum is one paragraph response, and then I define paragraph. Um, effectively, when I use the term minimum, I'm telling you how to get a C. If you want better than a C, then um, do more, right? Um, so that's, that's the idea, right? So it's about a page in response to each of the questions. So these are fairly involved um, tests. How it'll work is I'll post the test five days in advance of the due date. And right? so what you'll have in preparation for the test is, well, first me, I'll be posting on Wednesdays. So if you want to come by the office hours on Thursdays, we can talk about how to best prep for the tests. Right, that sort of thing. Um, it, so you'll have me, you'll have your books in front of you, you'll have your notes from the video lectures, you'll have the video lectures and all of the supplements um, uh, right there. Uh, plus, you'll have the discussion forums, which I consider your rough workspace um, before this material, right? because each of the theorists that we'll be discussing will have a discussion forum topic that I'll curate um, uh, for you. Right. And it'll it'll pop up as soon as the uh, the new material does. Right. You'll see it just go. Right. Um, on that topic, um, it, you you've got an email with this video and the syllabus. Um, you you won't get emails when new material pops up. I'll just post it. It's your responsibility to check Moodle and stay up to date with the course kind of regularly. Um, so um, it, that's, that's, that's the test, that's how they're broken down, six questions, 5% of your final grade each, um, it, which is, I know, a lot, right? This is why you've got to give yourself time and concentrate on these. I, I, I give you a good five days to work with this material, so use the time. Um, and then on top of that, 10% of your final grade is for these forums. Um, which is enough to move you a full letter grade kind of thing. I've seen students performing well enough to get an A that didn't do the forums, that got B's instead. Right? I've seen C's turned into D's by not doing the forums and that sort of thing. And I've seen D's turned into C's. C's turned into B's by really doing an excellent job on the forums. Um, like I say, the forums are um, there's your rough workspace, right? Uh, what I'll do is I'll get the ball rolling. I will create a forum question. I will make a YouTube video of um, said forum question telling why I think it's an interesting topic and getting the ball 
excuse me, rolling into the, the, the discussion topic, that sort of thing, um, then I leave you. That's your space. The forums are a great place to work out, like if you've had a problem reading or interpreting one of these theorists, or um, just don't understand something you've seen in a video, that sort of thing, you can discuss with your fellow students in this course this material. It's like, it turns, turns the course into a big think tank of like-minded people that are all trying to understand what the heck is going on in terms of fairly difficult ethical theory. Right? So um, that's what the forums are intended to be. What's an appropriate response? Well, first off, I don't care if um, you start a new topic or reply to somebody else's topic. I track both, you get grades for both. Right? Secondly, um, my topic it just gets the ball rolling. You can expand on it, you can follow the conversation wherever it leads, that sort of thing. Um, the forums are a great place to, say, ask a question. Right? Well, on page, um, well, let's use an example. Uh, 35 of Existentialism and Human Emotions, um, uh, Sartre claims what the existentialist says is that the coward makes himself cowardly, that the hero makes himself heroic. There's also all, always a possibility for the coward not to be cowardly, and, uh, not to be cowardly anymore, and for the hero to stop being heroic. What counts is total involvement. Uh, some one particular action or set of circumstances is not total involvement. You could just quote that passage and say, I don't get it, I think it means this, but maybe I'm way off. Did anybody else have any thoughts on that passage? And you get points. You expand your understanding of the material, etc., etc., etc. And so it's, it's a great study resource that I give you. I basically give you points for having a conversation about this material. Right. So um, that, that's what the idea is there. So um, uh, the evaluation. The idea is that um, these forms. For it's all continue with the forms for now. Um, the forms. As soon as the forums are posted, I leave them up all semester. So next week you'll see the Socrates forum pop up, and it'll be there till December 13th at 11.55 when the course ends. That's last call, right? So uh, conceivably, you've got access to it. You can keep getting points for having done that forum all the way up to the end. Right? These forums work best, though, when your posts are timely, they're topical, and they reflect reading and understanding of the material. And, um, and I keep an eye on when the posts were posted, right? because it's supposed to be, the spirit of the thing is that it's supposed to be an ongoing conversation between you guys about this material. So if all of you are posting on December 12th, you're not having an ongoing conversation about the material all through the semester, right? And that is going to affect your grade. Um, you're expected minimally to post once for each topic, and remember what I just said about minimums, that's how you get to see. Um, it, make sure your posts are substantial, and make sure that you, know, you exceed that minimum, right? Um, and basically, I want to see evidence that you're trying to understand the material in dialogue with other students. And so uh, that's the question I ask myself uh, when I grade uh, these things. And right? so uh, I've got a, an example here. A post like, I agree or this is stupid without additional comments will be insufficient to garner a passing grade. Right? So uh, that's the idea there. Um, attached to the forums in the policies section, you'll see a content policy, um, discussion forum content policy. Um, this, this material is going to get you hot under the collar, right? Because uh, one, these guys are telling you what to do. Two, we're critically evaluating what are in some cases your beliefs that you have inherited from you know, your culture, your family, um, and you cherish, right? So you're likely to get a little defensive in some cases. 
keep in mind you're arguing about theory, right? You're arguing about these positions. You're not arguing to win against someone else. So on that topic, I will tolerate no derogatory, defamatory, personal attacks or anything of that sort, right? This is an academic resource and it is subject to the Oakland University Code of Conduct, right? So keep it classy. Don't attack the arguer, argue the argument. That's, that is what you're required to do there. And secondly, keep on topic, right? The Socrates Forum is not for talking about your weekend. It's not for talking about, hey, when are we gonna get our grades back or anything along those lines. And it's for talking about Socrates. If you're not talking about Socrates, it doesn't belong in the Socrates forum. And so um, that said, if if I get like derogatory, defamatory, or personal attacks on this forum, I'll one remove the post, and two issue sanctions, and three if it's severe enough, contact the dean of students. And so. It, you see, that's the problem with the policy section. Um, all of these policies are policies because I've had problems in the past, and this is your first little ethical problem here. Um, it's my first ethical problem entering an ethics class like this, trying to introduce these policies. You see, it puts me in the position where I'm accusing you, even though I haven't even met you yet. You're probably very nice people, and these issues probably aren't issues for you. And I'm, Overjoy if these issues aren't issues for you. Don't make these issues issues for you, is what I'm asking you to do. And you're good, and I'm good, and we're happy, right? But these policies are there because I've had problems in the past, and I'm a big believer in solving a problem before it becomes a problem. And it gets rather complicated, right? It's, it's a funny way to live your life. But um, nonetheless, right, uh, that's, that's why there's a content policy there. Anyhow, that's the forms. Um, related to your um, uh, section tests, like I say, uh, they're not comprehensive. They'll be testing only the two theorists that are the subject of the test. Right? Um, I've got due dates for them, test one uh, due October 9th, so you'll have a, it'll be posted to Moodle on the 4th. Um, uh, test two due by November 6th, so you'll have it by, I think I said, the, the second. Um, I go early on these. Um, it, no, I said Wednesday, did, did November 1st, right? Um, so I go early on these if I can, um, as well, to give you more time. And then uh, your final, I give you over a week for the final. Um, it's due on December 13th. So after you come back from Thanksgiving, um, your final, you will have it, right? And I give you the whole day there, 11.55, five minutes to midnight. That's when your discussion topic forums close as well. Um, so related to these tests, like I say, there's a substantial amount of writing uh, where you're engaging with theory and uh, bringing all of your knowledge to bear on these questions. Now, um, uh, the point is this should be your knowledge, or if it's not, I need some sort of sign that these words or ideas are not yours. So this brings us to the plagiarism policy. Um, effectively, plagiarism is when you just grab somebody else's words bad uh, or ideas and uh, slap them on a page and pretend they're yours. That's not cool. One, um, it, we have intellectual pro property law, right? that's theft. You can't do that. Right? I've seen deans fired from schools, I've seen books ripped from library shelves and recalled as publications, I've seen and, I've seen a number of students right, go through a full academic hearing uh, for in this case. I've seen students suspended from school. I've seen students kicked right out of school um, for plagiarism. Don't just don't don't do it. Right? If the idea or words are not your own, tell your reader that those words or ideas are not your own. Now, this, this is the thing. Um, the Oakland University has a big honking library. 
I, normally I'm just moving into this office. I would show you all of my books, but I don't have all my books here yet. Right? I, I have lots of books. These are like tools. These are It's a reference library, and I refer to arguments all the time. I just submitted a dissertation last year that had close to 900 footnotes in it. Right? It's, I'm not saying, and nobody is saying, don't use the ideas that are out there. I just have had you buy this a big pile of books. Right? It's, we're supposed to be engaging with and utilizing the knowledge of the past. It's just we need to make a clear distinction between what other people have argued and what we're claiming credit for. And my job is to determine how well you understand this material and how well you communicate yourself that understanding. Right? If you're quoting, it's generally just evidence for claims that you're making. Uh, if you have a quote, you should have just as much writing as that quote discussing and explaining the quote. Right? And a proper reference on the quote saying to your reader, this is where you find it, because it's evidence. Right? If you're paraphrasing from someone else, you got to tell your reader that you're paraphrasing from someone else. Otherwise, you're saying, look at me, look at how smarty smart I am. Right? Whereas, really, it's somebody else's ideas. I know you're probably rolling your eyes at this, but academics, generally, this is what we trade on. This is our ideas, our, our economic resources. This is how we exist in the marketplace. And if somebody just goes around swiping our ideas, then we don't have anything to trade. This is important, right? So, um, that said, there are a couple of things. I'll tell you about my contract first. It's sort of a funny thing if you look at it. Uh, my contract it, it, it stipulates that I am an adequate judge of whether or not you understand this material and have performed sufficiently in this class to garner the grade that I issue. That's where my expertise ends. Authorship? Though Clinton University does not want me to determine authorship, if I suspect plagiarism, I am to turn that over to the Dean of Students office and their experts will determine whether it's authored by the student or not. Right? At that point, we're into the academic hearing wherein all sorts of fairly ugly sanctions are possible. You could be suspended. You could be suspended for the current semester. You know how some of you are taking five courses right now? Well, at the end of the semester, they could suspend you for that course. So, you know those five courses you're taking? Grades wiped. They could kick you out of the school. Right? All sorts of other things. You know, academic probation. Anyhow, you get the point. Right? And then I get to tack on a policy. And just to help you with your cost-benefit analysis, which is one section of the course that we're going to actually discuss, just to help you with that cost-benefit analysis. Right? Well, is it worth it? I don't know. I could benefit this much, but the cost is way up here. Well, I'm putting the cost way up here, right? If you plagiarize on one question, on one test, you fail the course, right? It's just, you see, all I'm, I'm, all I'm doing is saying it's not worth it, right? And the reason I'm saying it's not worth it is so that we can actually, you know, achieve the function of the course, which is for me to be able to evaluate what you have understood this material. And if I get what somebody on the internet understands of this material rather than your words, your thoughts, or your reflections, I don't have anything to base that grade on. What would I base that grade on? Huh? I've read I've read all of those web pages too. Uh, so, um, and again, this is an ethical problem because here I am waving my finger at you and you haven't done anything and you're probably perfectly nice people who wouldn't ever even consider this anyway. And to that I say, great, but we've just solved the problem before it's become a problem. There's a policy there, don't do it, the policy doesn't apply to you. Uh, other things uh, regarding, to the uh, regarding the assignments, missed assignment policy. Oh man, I understand life happens, 
I, I really do. I've got twin girls, two years old, one of whom um, it, it has a number of health problems. We're actually staring down the barrel of a, a heart surgery sometime in the next year, and we don't know when. Um, I get it. Things, things happen. And if things happen, if life happens to you, right around one of these assignments and you can see you're going to miss the deadline or it just happened that, you know, your basement floods right when something's due and you don't get your assignment in. I'm going to work with you, right? I'm not a jerk. I'm a nice guy and I'm going to work with you. Right? The thing is, I need you to work with me to help me work with you, right? The, Extensions need to be a conversation. I'm going to be real forthcoming with them and I'm going to work with you to get you through this course. Especially when life happens, we can, we can work it out. Right? You just need to work with me. So if you're going to miss an assignment, contact me. If you have missed an assignment, contact me within 12 hours of the deadline or due date in question. And so, effectively, for a lot of those noon deadlines that, that we're talking about, that's by midnight, same day. Right? Otherwise, I won't be able. You see, this policy is a policy because I have people take a course starting in September. First test is at the beginning of October, and I'd have people at the beginning of December approaching me, oh, by the way, I haven't taken that first test yet. When can I do the rewrite? Well, no. I've passed out an answer key. Everybody's had feedback in their grades. I've talked about it in class. Right? No, it's not. It's not. It's not fair. Right? You're all on deadlines. I give you like five days to engage with these assignments. Giving somebody two and a half months to engage with one of these assignments. It's not. It's not fair. Right? So it, work with me, and I'll work with you, and we'll keep everything fairly timely, and it, it will. will work to get everybody through the course, but you've got to work with me. Uh, the other thing about assignments is when you're uh, submitting an assignment, it's your job to make sure I get it. Uh, you'll be uploading single files to Moodle. I'm thinking about a plagiarism policy, a, a, a submission statement, and I, I attest that this is uh, you know, all in keeping with academic regulations and requirements and it, it contains no plagiarism to the best of my ability of blah 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 yakety schmackety kind of thing. So you're going to have to submit, you're going to have to submit your final draft and then I'll have it. Uh, but instructional technology can be buggy sometimes and maybe this is your first time using Moodle and you don't know what's going on, that sort of thing. Well, you see my email address up there? If you're nervous about it, also email me your assignment. And then you're sure I've got it. Right? That way, I've got it. It's my job to assess what I get, and it's your job to get it to me. Right? I'm, it, I'm not asking for a lot here. You just have to get it to me. I'm not going to chase you is the other thing. Right? It's not my job to chase you down for your own work. It's, this is university. We don't do that. Okay, and um, the other thing that goes wrong with assignment submission, if it's going to get wrong, go wrong, sometimes some semesters I open the fill uh, 1100, uh, uh, 1300 uh, test one, and it's somebody's English homework. It's a nice analysis of Faulkner or something like that. And while I'm interested in a nice analysis of Faulkner, it's not a Socrates, Aristotle. Uh, response to my questions, right? So uh, make sure I've got the right file to double check, right? Make sure I get it because it's your job to get it to me. It's my job to grade it and get it back to you with feedback. Right? You'll find I give you a lot of feedback. Um, regarding feedback, I, I type a lot, right? So I, I, I tend to give a lot of feedback. And when you see a lot of typing there, don't freak out. It's not because I'm typing angry or anything along those lines. It's because I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to guide you. I'm trying to draw it out of you, as Plato would say. And that's the key to instruction. It's, I'm, not, I'm not inserting knowledge in your head. I'm drawing out your abilities and your capacity for learning and understanding. Right? So um, it, that's what I'm trying to do. Right? It, everything I type at you has an eye to being therapeutic and helping you succeed in this course. That's, that's what it is. Right? Um, so 
anyhow, I guess we should do the rest of the uh, the policies. Email. Um, just yesterday, I emailed my wife, and she was in the next room. And I walked by her office door and said, "Hey, just sent you an email." And I said, "Oh, okay. Oh, I don't have it yet." Four hours later, she got the email. It's not instant, right? So don't treat it like it's instant. Don't expect that it's up. I'll respond within a reasonable period of time if it's humanly possible. But I am teaching three sections online and I am teaching four courses over all this semester. I have a lot of students and a lot of students are emailing me. Um, yeah, I'm going to fall behind. Right? So the best way to ask me questions is office hours. Right? So I've got these office hours. You show up, you ask me a question. I say, okay, here is the answer to that question. You walk away with your answer and I, I don't have another email in the hundreds of emails that I get daily kind of thing. Um, so um, yeah, I'm going to do my best to stay on top of email. Uh, but like I say, I still have students emailing me from last semester. Right? And come October, end of October, I'm going to have students emailing me about next semester. So it's the good. Plus, on top of that, I've got the forms all set up so that everybody gets an email anytime anybody posts. This is how I read through them. I read them all, right? So um, I've got a lot of electronic communication to, um, to stay on top of, and I'm, I'm going to fall behind. Um, the other thing is if I get 10 questions that are the same, I send out an email to everyone. That's just what I do. Right? I'm not ignoring you, I'm just trying to be efficient. Right? Because if 10 of you have emailed me, 40 of you probably have the question. Right? And uh, that's like uh, almost a third of my students. Right? So everybody gets the answer, everybody goes. And if it doesn't apply to you, delete it and go, oh, well, that's useless. Right? Or if it does apply to you, it's like, oh, hey, I've got my answer, and away you go. Right? Um, and then one final note about email, um, Oakland University likes to own things, so um, you'll see the email this was attached to came from um, an oakland.edu account. And get your oakland.edu um, account up and running because technically, contractually, if you send me a Gmail or a Media.com or a Comcast or whatever, right? Yahoo. Does anyone use Yahoo other than me anymore? Or Hotmail? Does that even exist anymore? I don't know, right? But um, I, I'm not technically res supposed to respond regarding official Oakland University business to a non-Oakland University email address. It's technically I'm not supposed to. I will. Usually with some sort of note about, you know, use your OU email address next time. But um, nonetheless, right, that's the last thing about email. Um, and I've already talked about the, uh, the content policy and then finally, and, and I don't mean to be a jerk about this, um, there's credit, there's no extra credit in this class, there's just not time. Um, like I say, I'm teaching four sections this semester. Um, five sections in a year is considered a full-time load for a researcher with service commitments. So, I, you know, this semester I'm almost teaching a full year, right? So um, there's, there's no time for an additional assignment or anything along those lines. There's credit, and I'm going to work with you to help you get as many of these points as possible and that sort of thing, but there can't be extra credit even on a one-case basis because um, we're concerned with FAIR, right? It, this is an ethics course, and in order to be FAIR, I would have to offer it to my 130 students, and I don't have time to grade 130 extra somethings. I'm going to struggle to get through grading these somethings. So that, that is um, what it's got to be. So this is the syllabus. Right? How, it's, how it's laid out is the very general course information, uh, pertinent stuff, office hours, office location, name, email address, course description, list of books, and grade breakdown. Page one. We've been through that. Page two is um, general policies, which have just made me seem like a big jerk and wagging my finger. But really, I'm, I'm quite a nice guy. I'd like to be heavy at first and then permissive for the rest of this. I mean, 
I'm not a jerk. Right? I don't need to be heavy handed in how I just need policies in place if there are problems that might be coming. And um, evaluation, I've talked about the discussion forums um, and section tests, instructional technology, um, it's, it's all Moodle. It's all Moodle. Um, all of the videos for the course, um, you'll see, I record YouTube videos that go over this material. Um, then I supplement those YouTube videos with other theorists who have done good jobs of presenting this material um, as well, just so it's not the Grant Yoakum show. Right? I want you to have a number of diverse perspectives um, on this material. Um, that These are all required. Right? It's just like coming to lecture. Um, and I, you can't expect to not come to lecture for a month and be A-OK -okay in a course. Right? That's just not the way. Uh, it ha happens. Assignments on Moodle, forms um, on Moodle, uh, handouts if there are handouts on Moodle, links to video resources, course conduct. It's all Moodle and it's your responsibility to access Moodle to stay up to, uh, up to date. Um, page 3 also has um, a very simple, I can hold it up, uh, important dates uh, section that's the abridged version of page five which gives you a tentative schedule right um, that lays it out between uh, weeks right we're in week one right now uh, September 6th through 9th we're doing the syllabus which we're discussing right now uh, course policy which we're discussing right now um, overview which we're doing right now and a general hi historical introduction to philosophy, which is another video that I'll um, post shortly. It's a little bit older. I recorded it in my living room, which is green, which is funny. But um, nonetheless, right, um, I'll be on Moodle. Right? Uh, then week two and three, we begin in earnest. Um, there's going to be Socrates. You're going to read the textbook. Um, uh, you're going to screen my Socrates video, you're going to look at the one from Roderick, um, you're going to look at Philosophy Guide to Happiness, Socrates on Self-Confidence, and you're going to see that there is a discussion forum with a video explaining the discussion forum. And that'll be your pretty standard week. Um, there are a couple of weeks with this. Every couple of weeks, a new batch of material is just going to pop up on Moodle, and you'll work your way through. Right? Um, over a couple of weeks. We've got two weeks for Aristotle as well. Um, and I try to make this all very manageable. Right? So um, on this tentative schedule, you'll see your test dates in there, a note about um, Thanksgiving recess, so everybody grab your toque and your scarf and head out to the playground. I, I love how they call it the recess kind of thing. That's, that's just what I think of in recess. Oh, right? well, it's a holiday anyway. Um, so um, Anyhow, a note about that, and a note about when everything else closes down. Then the final page of the syllabus um, gives you the grading scheme. Um, give this a close look, uh, because uh, my percentage point grade, uh, letter grade, um, it is different than what you're used to. Right. So, um, for example, the B range is 79.9 all the way down to 70. It's, so if you're in the 70s, you're a B. If you're in the 60s, you're a C. Or you're in the 50s, you're a D, and anything below a D is an F. Right. So, uh, but the A range starts in 80 and goes up to 100. So you see, it just for your simple math, everything totals to 100 here. Right. So effectively, the number of points you've got is the number of points that go towards your percentage in the course. It's nice and simple. And then I take that and turn it into a letter grade, and below that you'll see the official letter grade to grade point conversion from Oakland University's Office of the Registrar. All the Office of the Registrar ever sees from me is the GPA. Right? So, let's say you get a 66 in the course. Uh, trying to depress you or anything along those lines. Well, that's a C and it's a high C, so a high C is a 2.7. You get 66% in the course, that's a high C. So 2.7, the red office of the registrar is getting a 2.7 from me, submitted for you, that sort of thing. You see how your letter grade is still your letter grade and it doesn't 
Matt, it, this is here so that you don't freak out. I've had semesters where I've not posted this and I've given, you know, an 18 out of 30 back to somebody who's like, oh my God, I'm failing the course. No, that's a 60. You got a C, right? A C is still in there, I'm swinging. It's not the end of the world, right? So, um, anyhow, um, that is uh, your course syllabus. I look forward to having these discussions with you. I think um, in specifically this day and age, it's important to actually um, have these discussions. I'm coming at you with some dusty old theorists, but I'm coming at you as a specialist in uh, current ethical theory and activist theory as well, right? So related to practice, right? So um, we will be trying to make this material as timely as possible. We'll be asking questions like, what does it mean to be a patriot? What is justice? Um, you know, it, how best to strategize in developing the right kind of habits to help us live our lives and have those lives be fulfilled, right? Um, we'll be engaging cost-benefit analysis. We'll be asking about the underlying nature of actions, and we'll be illustrating all the way through with contemporary examples. So hopefully it will be um, an interesting course for you. If you have questions, please contact me. If you have concerns, uh, also please contact me. If you have, you know, pleasant sort of friendly things to say, contact me with those two. It's nice to have a change of pace. Uh, and um, have good days, uh, one for each of you. All right, take care.